Operation Spectre Rising has a lot of really good stuff in it. It has a new specialist character that I think is a lot of fun to play, has cool animation, and all in all I think is relatively balanced with the meta of Black Ops 4. We got three new multiplayer maps, including two maps, and then a remake map being WMD. On top of that, we got new game modes, like today, Prop Hunt was released on Black Ops 4, and next Friday will be released on Xbox, which by the way, tonight on my live streams, which as this video goes live, has has started we will be doing an open lobby so you guys are actually going to be able to play some prop hunt with me like I said that is going to be the first link down in the description and hopefully I see you there tonight anyway like I was saying before with operation Spectre rising they added in a lot of really great stuff the problem is, is all of this really good stuff is completely overshadowed by the shit that Treyarch puts into the game. Like, for example, so many goddamn duplicates. By the way, guys, if you came here for a positive video today, you just so happen to be in the wrong place. Normally, my videos are positive. We talk about the great things in Call of Duty. Today is not one of those days, so you might want to click off the video if this is not what you're looking for. However, if you're looking for me to be blatantly honest with you and talk about the state of the game that I think most of us here love, this is the right place for you. So here we go, Treyarch. It's time to stop. So you may remember at the end of Operation Grand Heist, I made a video called Operation Grand Disappointment, and I was going to call this video Operation Disappointment Rising. The problem with that, though, is disappointment has already rose, and I think it's honestly at a peak. So that title wouldn't really have made any sense. So today I wanted to start out this video by not looking at what I have to say, but by looking at what the community has to say, and specifically several different YouTubers who I am friends with have already made videos talking about. So I'm going to give you their points of view, and then afterwards I'm going to give you mine. I am really not happy with what they've been doing with a lot of the things multiplayer wise with Black Ops 4 and this event is no exception. It feels like a skeleton crew is working on multiplayer and they're just barely hanging in there. Either that or whoever's making the decisions over there at Treyarch is completely incompetent and making horrible decisions for this game. It seems like they're not putting in the work, they don't respect the player base when it comes to multiplayer, and I just keep losing interest more and more. In the game's current state, I'm basically just playing this in order to do my job. I'm no longer playing multiplayer just to have a good time. If I'm thinking about hopping on and having a fun experience, I'm not playing Black Ops 4 multiplayer. The gameplay is fun. I like Spectre. I like the new animations that were added. I like the specialist ability with the Shadow Blade. I, I like everything about it. I like the changes to the Blackout map. I'm still going to experience the, the three new maps that were added or the, the two new maps in WMD that was added today. But it really fucking pains me to know that there is nothing in the end. There is no grind worth doing in the end. Getting the same item over and over and over again is not only counterintuitive to player retention, but it's also a fucking slap in the face. So why the outrage? Why are these people upset? Why are people talking about this? Well, the main reason is, is because in the most recent update, even more items have been added to the reserves in Black Ops 4. If you don't know, reserves are essentially supply drops from previous Call of Duty games. And with more items being added, people were excited and then quickly realized that each of these items was individually segregated to individual weapons. So for example, they added weapon charms, death effects, and reactive camos. So weapon charms are weapon charms, we've seen them before. Death effects are essentially a different effect other than blood when you kill someone. The two that we know are confetti and money that shoot out of the dead bodies. And finally, reactive camos are what we've known have been in the game since the very beginning, right? Wrong. No, now that you unlock this new reactive camo, it is now unlocked individually per weapon. So they completely changed the system that we have known since the launch of the game. So, what does this do? It inflates the number of items in these reserves and makes it harder to get all of the items. Just numbers-wise, prior to this update, everything that's been in reserve so far was around 500 items. After this update, it's about a thousand items. So a thousand items, great, right? Well, no, because most of these items are just an individual item for different weapons or different characters. And I think E. coli Espresso did a really good job of explaining what these items are representative of. So here's the clip. 
to me. We had 10 weapon charms introduced in reserves for now 26 weapons. That's 260 items right off the bat. Three death effects were introduced for 27 weapons. That's 81 more items. We had at least two new camos for 27 weapons, one of which was a reactive camo, which is absolute bullshit that the fundamentals of the reactive system no longer apply that it's usable for all weapons, but instead it's parted out individually. That's another 54 items. We had at least two new war paints added for 25 characters in the game, 50 more items there. We had at least two new outfits for 13 characters, 26 more items, four Mark II variants, two blackout characters, and an absolute ass load of stickers, probably. That's around 500 items in Operation Spectre Rising that were introduced alone. But don't worry, don't worry. It's okay, because every item that we are looking at here is just a cosmetic, right? Wrong. Yeah. As it turns out, it's not cosmetic items only. In fact, what they've done here is all of the weapons that they've added in before in previous events, they've put into reserves, which is nice because they're free, right? Well, no, because the odds to get these are abysmal compared to the millions of stickers and duplicate weapon skins and all of these weapon charms that they just added in. In fact, what you have to do to get the old weapons is to get the one Mark II variant of that individual weapon. So you missed out on the SWAT, well you have to get the SWAT Mark II, now you have the weapon and your odds are less than one in 1000 in fact might even be less than one in 3000 let me explain so because of the way that the duplicates work in this game every third item you are guaranteed a fresh item even though I can roll the same item over and over and over again for example I have gotten John Doe the blackout character four times and I can keep getting John Doe the blackout character and now because of that I could roll John Doe John Doe John Doe and on the third John Doe that is the only time I get something new and that something new could be a sticker now because of this it makes figuring out how long it would take to get all of the items very difficult here's what prestigious key had to say about it it gets to be this way because and it gets me mad because previous operations they added a bunch of stuff to the reserves and I guarantee you that the average player that doesn't have 10 hours a day to play this game, there's no way in hell, no way at all, period. Even with the last operation, before they added all this crap, there is no fucking way that they would have been able to get every little thing out of reserves unless they played a lot, a lot. A lot is an understatement here. You see, when we really look at the numbers, we, there is about a thousand items within reserves. There's actually a little bit more than that, but let's just say it's a thousand because that makes it easy. This would mean your best case scenario, if you get zero duplicates, is you are going to have to open 1,000 reserves. The worst case scenario is that you get almost every single duplicate, and in this case, you're going to have to open 2,999 reserves. It's going to be somewhere in between there. It's going to probably be over 2,000 reserves. I don't have the exact number. I actually have someone working on an algorithm to figure out exactly how many drops the average would be. But that I will have in a future video. As for this one, Prestige had every single item before the new reserves were launched. In the new reserves, we just discussed that there was about 500 items. This would mean at minimum, he would have to open 500 reserves to get all of the items. At maximum, he would have to open 1,499 reserves. And in Prestige's words... And I still don't have everything after 401 reserves. So Prestige, worst case scenario, you have to open 1,098 more. Good luck, dude. And honestly, reserves are a massive problem that they've created for themselves within Black Ops 4. And I could honestly probably talk about it alone for a half hour. But there's also other problems that are being overlooked because of this. For example, multiplayer is barely being touched as far as updates go. Call of Duty World War II almost had double the amount of weapons in the game at this point. And on top of that, the game had been out for a month less. So less content equals less playability, essentially. On top of that, with the most recent update, Operation Spectre Rising, it has actually introduced more problems to the game than good. For example, a lot of people aren't talking about this, but I have been blue screening like there is no tomorrow. I play on a PlayStation Pro. I should not be having problems running this game. Yet every hour or so when I'm playing with a full party, I will blue screen get kicked out of the game completely. And when you're playing with a full party, it makes it incredibly difficult 
difficult because, generally speaking, one of those players is going to blue screen before the game starts and then there goes your party. On top of that, when you're playing in-game, a lot of players have noticed more lag lately. Well, that lag is whenever a player leaves or connects to the game, the lag will be increased within the game that you're playing. This was not there before Operation Spectre Rising. These problems are there, but the problem is Treyarch and Activision's focus is 100% on making money on reserves, on the tier system, on Blackjack's market, not on the actual game that people are playing. Treyarch, Activision, let me give you this piece of advice. If there is no game, there is no players. If there is no players, there is no money. You need to focus on building the game before the microtransactions, not the microtransactions before the game. On top of this, you also need to realize that people are going to get frustrated with microtransactions if they are completely anti-consumer. And they are. They really, really are. You gotta use that word lightly, but in your case... They are, especially, we, we haven't even looked at the Black Ops Pass, adding in WMD, a map that's not even reimagined, just made HD and that's it. And I realize it's more difficult than that, but at the same time, it's not a map. You used to introduce 16 new maps a year to your Call of Duty games. This year you're doing 12 and you make one of them a remastered map? Slap in the face like we were talking about before. Honestly, I could go on for hours about this, just talking about the mistakes that Treyarch has made, the things that need to be changed within the game, and everything in between. But to me, it comes down to one thing. One thing that my mom taught me growing up. She always told me to treat others like I would want to be treated. And Treyarch, look inside yourself and ask yourself this question. Are you treating the players of the game that you created the same way that you would want to be treated? Treyarch, do you want to not be able to get every item in the game? Do you want to be paying $30 for a melee weapon? Do you want to have to grind your ass off for a chance to get a ranged DLC weapon? Is that the way that you want to play a video game? Answer that question honestly before you go making any more decisions about your game. And that's all I have to say. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. On top of that, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have notifications on as it's the best way to stay up to date on all my videos. And down in the comments, guys, let me know. Do you like this face cam thing? I've been trying it out a little more. So if you like it, let me know down in the comments, and maybe we'll do more of this kind of thing. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out, guys. We are, we are reaching for the stars. But we're making this too hard